it's the ones that are successful loved what they did so they could persevere when, you know, when it got really tough. Because most people think it's impossible so they give up. Isn't that true? The key to success is often the ability to adapt. John McGrain learned this early in life when his family moved from Glasgow to Hamilton. It was a tough transition, uh, mainly because soccer uh, was not what it is today, which is an accepted equal amongst other sports. Uh, when I went to uh, public school, it was a very difficult transition for me. Everybody was playing football and baseball, so I, uh, I, I ended up trying all those different things and I quite enjoyed them. But my passion was always soccer and uh, as years went on, I started to progress to the point where I could play against better competition and I started to move up the ranks quite quickly at an early age. Following high school, McGrain headed west. He attended Simon Fraser University and won a national championship. His success translated into a roster spot on the 76th Canadian Olympic team. The event would have a profound effect not only on his career, but also on his identity. When you're born in another country, you, you tend to ha are conflicted about who and what you are. You become more Canadian than you think, uh, and that you don't realize that until you go back to your home country and realize that people look at you differently because you've changed. And when I went to play for Canada, there was a point where I wasn't quite sure what I was. But when I walked into the Olympic Stadium during the opening ceremonies, and there was 80,000 people cheering us on, it, it brought a, a lump in my throat. And I think it was at that moment that I really knew what I was and where I was and what I wanted to be. During the 70s, the fledgling North American Soccer League was bringing professional soccer on a large scale to the North American audience for the very first time. And they needed North American players. I was scouted uh, during the Olympic program by a number of teams in the North American Soccer League. And uh, two in particular, one was Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Rowdies, and the other one was the Los Angeles Aztecs. Now Tampa Bay offered more money but I wanted to play with my boyhood hero, which was George Best. And uh, so I took less money to go to L.A. and it was the best move I ever made. George Best was a maestro with the ball. And as fun as he was on the field, he was even funner off of it. With Elton John as an owner and the fifth Beatle as the team superstar, it was not uncommon for the Aztecs to have celebrities hanging around the pitch. For McGrain, it couldn't get any better. He was living on Rodondo Beach, rubbing shoulders with the stars and getting paid. Everything was going great, except one thing. He wasn't playing. McGrain knew he would have to adapt and change positions in order to stay with the team. I played my whole life as a forward. And when I got to Los Angeles, I was sitting on the bench for the first 10 games of the season. And I realized with the wealth of talent that they had, that I didn't see myself really breaking in. So one day I went to the coach and I said, and I knew there was an exhibition game coming up against a touring English team. <clears throat> and I asked him, what's the chances of playing fullback? And he had asked me if I'd done it before and I lied, I said yes. Uh, and so he said, okay, he says next week we're playing against Chelsea and I'll put you in at right fullback and we'll see how you do. Well, you know, that's like getting thrown in the deep end. But I did well. Uh, I think it was pure adrenaline that kept me going. and. As fate would have it, the guy who was playing right fullback about three games later broke his ankle on, on a road trip. And my first game, uh, full game, as a starting right fullback was in Giant Stadium in front of 70,000 people playing against Pelé, Beckenbauer, and Giorgio Canaglio. Following the Aztecs, McGrain played for four more years suiting up for Montreal, Chicago and Minnesota. But even before he was finished playing, his focus began to shift. I had always wanted to open up an indoor sports complex, a soccer complex in my hometown. Uh, it was some way of giving back to the community, uh, that to give kids a chance to play 12 months of the year and be competitive. And instead of playing at gymnasiums, I wanted them to play on a really good uh, professional environment. McGrain retired and returned to Hamilton to build Soccer World. It was the first indoor soccer facility of its kind in Canada. 
but it was not without its struggles. I was lucky enough to be able to, to have some money left over from my career. We had some investors who put some money into it. So it wasn't the financial restraints that you would think so. It was a cultural one. Uh, it was one where whenever you introduce something that is innovative, you're always going to get pushed back from traditionalists. And second of all, why would you pay $100 an hour to rent a facility to play in when you can get a gym for free? So it was getting past that type of mentality that what we're building is going to help you players get better. You're going to be playing on turf, you're going to be playing in a controlled environment, you're not jumping over benches, we're creating competitive game situations that the players will enjoy. And it took quite a while, it took probably a couple of years, but once it took hold, it really took off. McGrain represented Canada 17 times. The country that at first puzzled him provided him with a chance to fulfill his dreams. It gave me the opportunity to do and be what I wanted to be. And there's no other country in the world that would have done that for me. So I was very fortunate that my family sacrificed their early years in Canada and they worked very hard to give their children the chance to be whatever they could be. And that's exactly what happened. So I love the city, warts and all, uh, but I love Canada and there isn't anything I wouldn't do to help project that across the world. The Hamilton Sports Hall of Fame welcomes John McGrain.